So back on Amazon Lily, there was a big revelation about Boa Hancock in that she was once a slave of the world nobles. And as a result, they gave her a mark so unequivocally evil that she must keep it hidden at all costs. However, Boa has now summoned the strength to reveal it to you all here today. And here it is, that's right. Those scumbag world nobles subscribed Boa Hancock to the Grand Line Review, which to this day still uploads regular One Piece content straight into her YouTube feed. And I mean, just ugh. Every time you think they can't get any worse, they always find a way to surprise you. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today I'd like to vaguely peer into the future and imagine for a minute a world beyond Wano. Now at the time of this recording, such a world is a laughable concept because this mammoth arc is nowhere near approaching a conclusion. However, some very interesting questions have popped up as well as some key information regarding the lifespan of One Piece. So I think this topic is very much worth examining. And first of all, if somehow you're not aware, the number has been floated around that One Piece has roughly five years left in publication. But I immediately would not take this number seriously at all because commenting on One Piece time related events has never worked out well. But at the same time, it is undeniable that the series is now gunning for a conclusion. So perhaps those words are entirely seriously intended. And while One Piece could go on for much longer, we are hopping into the end game here, which means that we probably have two, maybe three at a stretch, larger arcs to go. And by large arcs, I mean the Dress Rosa, Whole Cake Island, Wano scale stuff, but it could also include shorter stories like Punk Hazard or Fishman Island, both of which took around a year of real world time to publish. Because you know, in almost any other series, these would be considered fairly lengthy arcs. But with this in mind, we can very much begin to narrow down what the final few installments of One Piece may possibly be, which could be done by possible locations or an absence of a clear destination, a natural plot point, and I have a couple of both to share with you. But before we begin, I do want to state that even though we are nearing the end of One Piece, there is one arc that we know cannot possibly be the very next after Wano, which is Laugh Tale. And this just comes from a purely technical perspective, because unless the final road poneglyph just drops in at the end of Wano, it is just not possible to reach Laugh Tale. So naturally, we will need to take at least one step before that adventure takes place. And so what are our options from here? Well, we're going to start with an arc that's been widely anticipated by the fan base at large, quite possibly since before I became a One Piece fan, which is Elbar, the home of the giants, or at least the home of the most well-known clan of giants. But Elbaf is one of those locations that just keeps coming up and seems to be intrinsically linked to a great deal of the One Piece world and its characters, despite being something of an isolationist island, just as with Wano. And over our time in the series, there has been a very slow burning story developing surrounding this nation, which has been told through a couple of different perspectives. One of which is the giant warrior pirates who were co-captained by the very first giants we ever met on Little Garden, Dory and Broggy. And they were known as one of the most fearsome forces to have ever sailed the Grand Line. And over the years, this crew has been expanded upon during during the any Sobby arc, where we met two other former members being Oimo and Kashi, as well as in Big Mom's flashback, where we met the former captains, Jorul and Jarul. Jarul being Yaruru in Japanese, rather than how I say his Romanized name, which sounds more like Jarul. But this is just one of those meta stories that's been brewing in the background. And as we all know, One Piece has a ridiculous layer system going on in regards to its narrative, and way, way in the background has always been the culture of the giants of Elbar, which is becoming more and more linked to the Straw Hats, to the point where Harudin, a member of the Grand Fleet, is now seeking to revive the giant warrior pirates and pledge their allegiance to Luffy. Plus, in regards to the Straw Hats themselves, Elbaf is almost certainly directly linked with Usopp achieving a sense of his dream to become a brave warrior of the sea, because he has always been inspired by giants, and Elbaf would 100% be Usopp's location of choice to visit if he was given the power to magically travel to a single island. Even more so than Laugh Tale, I imagine. So I feel like in the same way that Whole Cake Island was kind of Sanji's arc, and Wano looks to be focusing greatly on Zoro, Elbaf could very much do the same with Usopp. Plus, we also have some unfinished business on Elbaf, a lot of unfinished business actually, because we did actually get to visit the base of the island during Big Mom's flashback. However, Oda also teased a hell of a lot more in regards to that giant tree, which seems to invoke a sense of Yggdrasil, given that the giants in the series tend to take after Nordic culture. But we've also heard tell of a mysterious Prince Loki, who if you do not remember, was the character who proposed to Lola and who was swiftly rejected, leading to Lola's excommunication and complete severance of any ties to the giants with the Big Mom pirates. But in conclusion, in Elbaf's favor, we have a strongly developed meta story ingrained into One Piece, a straw hat who has an incredibly vested interest in visiting the island, as well as some deep intrigue regarding its royalty and place in the world. There's a lot to be explored here, and I'm not sure if I see it happening without a dedicated section of story to it. This section may not have to be a mega arc. I mean, if anything, it could be more along the lines of Zoe, like a short stop, but discounting Laugh Tale, Elbaf is the last great long-term mysterious island remaining, and it could be a pretty great stage for the next arc. Speaking of mystery though, this next idea is a recent one, but given its inclusion in the story at this late stage, it does call into question whether or not 
Oda is setting up the potential for an arc to take place on or surrounding the location of God Valley, which may be difficult because the island has allegedly disappeared without a trace. However, that is exactly the sort of intrigue that would captivate a certain Monkey D. Luffy if he were to hear of it. Kind of like the golden city on Shandora that disappeared and turned up on Skypiea. Because yeah, Luffy is a man who hears vague words about an island in the sky and then immediately prepares to ride an incredibly dangerous knock upstream just to experience the sheer possibility of adventure. As for why the Straw Hats would want to go there, it is a bit difficult to say at this stage other than pure adventure. But really, when you think about it, the Straw Hats almost certainly never go anywhere that they actually want to go. It's more of a response to another character asking for help or proposing an idea or just following the whims of a log pose. So it could be a very simple thing where after Wano, a prominent character brings up the idea of God Valley and wanting to go there or needing to go there and bam, that's really all you need for Luffy to be interested. And it would also probably begin to tie in the inherited will aspect of the series quite well. You know, visiting the site of Roger, Garp and Zebek's fight, which saw the the end of the Rocks Pirates, so it might be great to bookend this whole Yonko saga and serve as a launching point for the worst generation to properly take the stage. Now next up we have less of a location in mind, but with Oda's jump fest to tease that Sabo, Vivi and Hancock might be in quite a bit of trouble at the moment, I feel like I do have to suggest the possibility of some sort of uh, rescue up, which I really don't want to, but I can't deny that we may be headed in that direction. And this is because if Vivi in particular were in danger, I just don't see the Straw Hats ignoring that, like how Luffy initially ignored the warning signs of Ace being in trouble. Sabo and Hancock, they might be a different story, but I have to say that one of my biggest fears going forward is that the Sabo and Ace similarities are going to continue and an entire arc will be dedicated simply to saving Sabo from being executed or something, just as we did with Ace, except this time Luffy will have the power to succeed and save his brother. I just personally think it would be pretty meh to replay that, but it's undeniable that Oda is taking Sabo on a very similar path to that of Ace. But the inclusion of Vivi and Hancock in Oda's Jump Fest statement does give me hope that we will get to do something a bit different. With all all of that said though, if the Straw Hats caught wind of these individuals in dire need, then they would surely set sail to rescue them, thus becoming at least one entire arc. But this is all even more wild speculation than usual, because we have no idea of the exact status of Sabo, Vivi, and Hancock. So moving on, let's examine something that we 100% know needs to happen, which is finding the final road poneglyph. So weirdly enough, we have actually seen the final road poneglyph in the series at this point, and it would seem that it used to be housed on Fishman Island. However, where it is now is a complete mystery, and people have offered speculation that yeah, it could be on Elbar or even God Valley, but I think that the Fishman Island revelation makes all of that significantly less likely, because God Valley should have vanished long before this poneglyph did, and unless Unless whoever took it had a special relationship with the giants, I find it hard to believe that it was just dumped on Elbar. So that of course brings another new location into the mix, where and what that is, I have no idea, but this poneglyph does need to be found, and given that after Wano the Straw Hats will have read three out of four row poneglyphs, then that would be the next natural goal, because at this point, I'm sure that Luffy can practically taste Laugh Tail around the corner. And the potentially fun thing is that finding this poneglyph could also be another short Zo style arc, because we've now had two giant arcs, the sub focus of both of which has been acquiring a road poneglyph, so why not have a second short one as well, balance it out. But finally, I'd like to explore another concept arc that could potentially be next on our plate, which is anything to do with the ancient weapon Uranus. And this is one of the things that makes me doubt the five year One Piece timeline the most, because we still have the idea of the ancient weapons to deal with. Two of which are relatively well fleshed out, relatively, but they took an awfully long time to do so. Because in terms of Poseidon, that took Fishman Island to build towards, but crazily enough, when you think about Pluton, that thing has been the central focus of two entire sagas, forget arcs, because Pluton was the catalyst for the Alabaster and Water 7 sagas. I mean, not the sole catalyst, of course, but the primary goal of the antagonist in each case. And in this late stage of the series, we have zero units of solid information regarding Uranus, which will no doubt be an absurdly important existence. But the closest thing we have in regards to this is probably Enel's trip to one of the One Piece moons, where he found some ancient paintings of a structure that may or may not be Uranus or Uranus related, or not related at all. We don't know. But even if it was, that's not quite enough to make it a core element of the series. And it feels more like the Straw Hats would have to have at least a single arc which has Uranus underlying it. So in that vein, maybe the Straw Hats could go into space because space travel is nowhere near impossible in this world. And let's be real, if that idea was proposed to Luffy, then I find it hard to believe that he wouldn't immediately be on board with it. Well, maybe it's not all the way into space, but it involves another sky island or something along those lines, which could even lead to the introduction of a Rouge and exploring him as a worst generation member. Whatever the case, Uranus as an ancient weapon needs some story development, any story development. And I have no doubt that Oda will be strongly linking it into a future arc, if not 
about the very next arc if we are indeed running out of publication time. And that's probably where I'm going to leave the arc speculation because yes, there are a lot of other ideas or figures at play like Dr. Vegapunk, for example, but I don't think any of them command their own arc centric story. They would more likely be absorbed into something else rather than form a core idea. And I'm feeling pretty good about everything I've said here. Keeping in mind, of course, that I am in no rush to get anywhere because at this point I am just enjoying the adventure. But with the supposedly limited time left, the future of this series still looks incredibly bright. And I am very, very excited at all of the possibilities for our next stop. But that pretty much does it for this potentially pointless, but also sort of fun discussion on ideas for the next One Piece arc. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do feel free to check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenanigans retakes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the next arc in One Piece. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear panda man, woman, person. Happy birthday to you. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear panda. Happy birthday to you.